Here's a question that can make even the best restorative dentist sweat. What are you doing when you're excavating a deep carious lesion and you're staring at soft dentin that's millimeters from the pulp? Do you keep digging until you hit hard dentin and risk an exposure? Or you stop, seal, and hope the pulp stays happy? For years, the right answer was pretty simple. You just take it all out. We were taught that any caries left behind was a guaranteed failure. That bacteria would keep marching toward the pulp like an invading army, and the only way to stop it was to remove every last bit of soft dentin, even if it meant hitting the nerve. But modern research is turning that thinking completely upside down. Today, we're diving into one of the most misunderstood decisions in restorative dentistry is, should you leave caries behind? Let's start with why this question matters. Deep caries management sits right at the crossroads between restorative and endodontic outcomes. One decision, just a few microns of dentin, can be the difference between a tooth that stays vital for years and a tooth that ends up with a root canal under extraction. And there's a big economic and emotional component here too. Every time a patient ends up with post-op pain or a new root canal after a deep filling, it damages trust. It's stressful for the clinician, frustrating for the patient, and very expensive for everyone. So what's the smartest, most evidence-based way to protect the pulp while still ensuring long-term restorative success? Well, before we talk about the research, let's revisit the biology. Caries isn't a static thing. It's an active, dynamic process involving bacteria, acids, and dentin. But the real game changer is in our understanding that not all infected dentin behaves the same. The outermost carious dentin, the soft, mushy, completely demineralized zone, it's loaded with bacteria and has no structural value. That part can't remineralize, it needs to go. But as you move deeper, closer to the pulp, the dentin becomes partially demineralized, but still retains collagen structure and can potentially remineralize. This is often called affected dentin. When properly sealed under a well-bonded restoration, that inner zone does not continue to progress. Why? Well, because once you isolate the nutrient source, once you seal the lesion from the oral environment, the bacteria become dormant. Without access to sugar, moisture, and oxygen, they simply can't keep doing damage. The new paradigm is this. You don't need to sterilize the tooth. You just need to seal it. Let's break down what the evidence actually shows, starting from the highest level down. First, the Cochrane Overview and Network Meta-Analysis from 2021. This review pooled data for more than a dozen clinical trials comparing different caries removal strategies, complete, selective, and stepwise in both primary and permanent teeth. Now, what was the verdict? For permanent teeth, selective caries removal came out on top. It offered the highest likelihood of keeping the pulp alive and the lowest risk of complications. Complete removal, the old school take it all out method, had the highest risk of pulp exposure and subsequent endo treatment. Stepwise removal, where you leave soft dentin, seal it temporarily, and then come back months later, performed better than complete removal, but not as well as selective one visit treatment. Patients also dislike the idea of re-entry, and every re-entry increases the risk of contamination and restorative failure. The Cochrane team concluded that the best balance between preserving pulp vitality and minimizing failure lies with selective removal, not complete and not stepwise. Then there's the ADA clinical practice guidelines on restorative treatment for carious lesions. This was released back in 2023. This is the most up-to-date evidence-based recommendation from the ADA. And it's a big deal because it moves the profession away from the remove it all mindset. The guideline explicitly recommends selective caries removal for deep lesions on vital teeth. It emphasizes that the dentist's goal should be to remove caries from the periphery to achieve a sound margin, but to intentionally leave soft and dent and pulp to avoid exposure. Now the ADA's reasoning is pretty clear. Once a well sealed restoration is placed, remaining bacteria under that seal become inactive and non-pathogenic. The key predictor of success isn't the dent and hardness at the base, it's the quality of the seal. That's a massive shift in how we think about clean. For decades, we equated a hard, shiny dentin floor with success. But now the science says it's not about hardness, it's about seal integrity. Next, the BMJ Open Randomly Controlled Trial from 2019. This compared selective removal and stepwise excavation in adult permanent teeth. After one year, both groups actually had pretty high survival rates, but selective removal came with much less patient burden, fewer appointments, and no significant difference in pulp vitality outcomes. There were virtually no pulp exposures in either conservative group. The overall success rate for selective removal was around 89% at 12 months, which is outstanding considering how deep the lesions were. 
The conclusion here is pretty simple. A single visit selective approach works just as well or better than multi-stage stepwise excavation. And it's more efficient for both the patient and the provider. Then there was a 2022 to 2023 meta-analysis by Yao and colleagues that looked across more than 10 clinical studies comparing selective and stepwise methods. Both achieved high pulp survival rates, typically above 88%, but again, the trend favored selective removal because it eliminated the need for re-entry. It reduced the cost and simplified the complete workflow. They also noted that the biggest determinant of long-term success wasn't the caries removal technique at all. It was the ability to achieve a durable, well-sealed restoration. Composite, resin-modified glass, and calcium silicate liners were all acceptable when they were used properly. Now, the foundational 2013 Journal of Dental Research meta-analysis still remains one of the most cited papers on the topic. And even a decade ago, they found that incomplete caries removal, which includes selective or stepwise, significantly reduced the pulp exposures and it increased long-term success rates compared to just complete excavation. So that research laid the groundwork for the ADA's later guideline shift and it validated what many conservative clinicians were already starting to anecdotally talk about, that the pulp tends to survive better when we stop chasing that hard dentin. Now, and most recently, there's a 2025 Caries research. It's a systematic review and a meta-analysis that it reinforced all of this. It analyzed new and older trials using advanced statistical modeling, and it, it included trial sequential analysis to control for any random error. And the authors concluded that selective caries removal outperforms everything else. And it helped maintain pulp vitality in deep restorations when there was no sign of irreversible pulpitis. Now they noted that evidence supporting stepwise excavation has kind of plateaued. It works, but it offers no clear advantage and it adds just more complexity. So selective removal done well is currently the best standard. So what's the clinical takeaway here? Well, if the tooth is vital, and asymptomatic, meaning no lingering pain, no spontaneous ache, no periapical findings, and the caries is deep but not exposed, the best course of action is to stop before you hit the pulp. And here's how that could look in your practice. You remove all the soft dentin at the margins. You want a clean periphery so you can bond or seal to, but as you approach the pulp, the dentin becomes soft and leathery. At that point, you stop. You don't keep cutting until it's hard. You disinfect the cavity with a mild antimicrobial like sodium hypochlorite, and then you seal it. Ideally with a liner like calcium silicate or resin modified glass ionomer to create a barrier and encourage remineralization. Then you restore it permanently with a restoration that ensures a great seal. Now, once the seal is in place, the remaining bacteria under that layer can't feed, multiply, or move. And studies show the bacterial counts when under well-sealed restorations, drop dramatically over time, sometimes even below detectable levels. The pulp then responds by laying down tertiary dentin, which gradually increases the distance between the restoration and the nerve. Now the tooth effectively heals itself. Stepwise excavation, where you leave soft dentin, place a temporary and re-enter months later to remove that, actually had its place historically, but it was used to manage fear of pulp exposure while still feeling like we were completing the job later. But the research shows it doesn't actually add benefit compared to one visit selective removal. Every time you re-enter, you risk introducing new bacteria, damaging the pulp, or compromising the restoration. And when the initial seal is good, there's no biological reason to disturb that environment ever again. The pulp is already healing. Reentry just resets that healing clock. So the modern research-based recommendation is pretty clear. Selective single visit caries removal is the preferred approach for deep lesions and vital teeth. Stepwise is acceptable only if you have doubts about pulpal status or can't achieve a good seal at the first visit, but it's not the goal. So we'll just summarize what the science and the clinical experience tells us. First, caries does not keep progressing if it's sealed off from nutrients. Leaving some soft dentin near the pulp isn't dangerous when you've eliminated access to the oral cavity. Second, the strongest predictor of pulpal survival isn't how hard the dentin feels, it's the seal. A marginal gap or micro leakage will undo even the most meticulous excavation. Third, selective removal drastically reduces the risk of any pulp exposure, which means fewer unnecessary root canals, less post-op pain, and happier patients. And fourth, stepwise removal can still work, but it's no longer the best option. 
One well-executed visit is much better than two. And finally, complete caries removal in deep lesions has the worst outcomes. It leads to more pulp exposures and more endo treatments without any real gain in longevity or restoration success. So should you leave caries behind? Well, yes, if it's really deep and the tooth is vital. The evidence from all these sources all point to the same conclusion, leading some affected dentin pulpally when properly sealed, it leads to a much better outcome in fewer root canals than removing it. We've moved way beyond the old dogma that soft equals failure. The real failure is a pulp exposure that could have been avoided. As long as your periphery is sealed, your margins are clean, and the restoration is stable, you've done what the research says is best for your patient and their long-term survival. So next time you're deep in a carious legion and you feel that little anxiety about leaving soft dentin behind, Remember this, you're not leaving decay, you're preserving vitality. The pulp isn't the enemy, it's a living dynamic tissue that wants to survive. Your job is to give it a fighting chance and that means protecting it, not exposing it. Selective caries removal is a scientifically proven, biologically respectful approach that reduces pulp exposures, lowers the endo rates and keeps more teeth alive. So go ahead, leave a little caries behind, just make sure you seal it perfectly. Let's keep working together to make dentistry fun, fulfilling, and rewarding. And subscribe so you don't miss the next strategy, and I'll see you soon.